Hey, shalom, shalom, my people. I pray that you're having a good day. Um, I felt the need to pull over for a second and have a conversation. And I want to talk to y'all about sex. And what I might say about sex may rub some of y'all the wrong way, no pun intended, or at least just give you a different perspective. So off the rip, this is not intended for women. Um, so you may want to go ahead and click off. Um, if you're a single woman or a, a woman that um, may be raising a young man, maybe it may be valuable to you in that context so that you may see or hear the the, the mind of a man that has transitioned into a more mature masculinity comparatively to what I had been told um, growing up. So that being said, growing up, I was told that a man expressed himself by the number of women that he had. I, um, I would get these, have these great conversations with my father, with my uncles, who I know that they were men amongst men. And in that, you know, it was always just about acquisition, not retention of women, just more about acquisition. And then, you know, I, obviously that's going to transition into, into sex, um, being brought up in that, in that mindset at a very early age can be very, very damaging, very damaging to, to one that's trying to develop, um, one a healthy relationship with the most high and even a healthy relationship within himself so if a man can't if he looks extrinsic of himself in trying to define his masculinity his manhood and that's purely based on acquisition and the ability to to get women to to get women into bed more specifically that's that's going to be a problem is this lifelong pursuit of, of turnover. There's no, nothing that's stationary that's, that can be foundational in the life of that man because he's still immature, clinging to things that may have been valuable at one time, but now he sees is no longer valuable. And then if you, if you look at our fathers, so me accepting the fact that we are the children of the Most High and that we are, you know, Judah, you know, Judah, specifically Judah, based on the text, based on Joel uh, chapter two, you know, Deuteronomy 28. Looking at this text, I have to go back and say, well, who were my fathers? What were some of the the, the things that my fathers fell prey to so that I don't fall victim to the very said same thing. And a lot of that was sex, sexual addiction, sexual problems, sexual sin, sex crimes. Our people were notorious for that. Read, you know, just, just read the text. I'm not even gonna start reaching out about scripture over scripture, but I would always, you know, encourage people to go back to um, to Genesis chapter 38 and just read how the Most High felt about sex. The Leverite covenant, you know, with Ornan, Onan, and Ur, and Sheila. If you go back and you look at the way that the Father intended to raise up seed of a brother that was deceased. He died, Onan died because of his own wickedness. He died. And so his wife, Tamar, was left without a son. Um, actually was never given seed. Um, well, not saying that they didn't, obviously they consummated the marriage. I mean, wasn't able to produce a son. So the task was then given to Ur and Ur in his selfishness, his lack of desire to want to continue the line of his brother, he spilled the seed. And, you know, we have to pause right there for just a moment. Because the result of him spilling the seed was his death. And so 
For me, when I began to look at how I was raised and Father, forgive me because I know that I've spilled my seed because the desire was purely selfish, trying to accomplish an end that was not righteous. See, the more that you spill seed, the more you give your life source. This is your life source. This is your, the essence of your life. This is the most valuable, the most complex, sophisticated, intelligent code, let alone genetic code, the most intelligent, valuable code that ever was or ever will be. And we just spill it, flush it down the toilet, waste it as if it's nothing. When we have in the text where one did that and he was killed. Is it that we are killing ourselves because we are just aimlessly spilling seed? Purposely spilling seed without it having any intent. It's just for our own gratification and selfish satisfaction. Because I had to ask myself, you know, when I look at, you know, the locker room talk that we have, being an athlete, being a military man, you know, men talk and you you hear men advocate things like, man, I got to have sex three, four times a week. I need to have it every day. I wake up in the morning and I, I got to get one off. Where did this come from? How, how did we get this programming? And then I asked myself, who benefits from this programming? Who told you you had to have sex every day? And I'm going to say it, that this is for men. I, I talk to men that you got to bust a nut every day, multiple times, multiple times a day. Where did this come from? Where did this immature mindset come from? It came from us talking to us that even if your woman don't want to give it to you I'll get it for myself I'll just you know get me some lotion some Vaseline and Mary Palmer and her five sisters we're gonna handle that business <laughs> because my day just won't go right if I don't get one off that's very immature it's very destructive and I had to see that for myself that, you know, I had a conversation with a brother even about and I'm trying to not to go all over the place. But these things are interconnected. I was talking to a brother about his wife's lack of desire or inability to submit to him. And after we had a deeper conversation, he had the same mindset that I had about sex. I need to get it off. I need to. You know, she needs, if she's my, my only method of expressing my sexuality, then she needs to be available to me every time I want it. Forget about what she wants. Forget it. You know, it has to be about what I want. That's a very immature mindset. So therefore, she may have an inability to submit to you because you haven't disciplined your desires. And then you respond to you not getting what you desire like a woman. You acting like her. You mad. You got an attitude. You pitching a fit. You rocking around um, passive aggressive. You my woman, ain't you? Then help me. Whereas maybe if you had more control of your faculties, more control of your desires, that she would look at you as a God. Yeah, I said it, as a God. I'm not going to shy away from what the scripture says. No, I'm not saying that I'm the most high, but I'm repeating what the scripture has said. I have said, ye are gods and all your children of the most high. I believe that's Psalms 82. So, you have to be a child of the most high. Me being a son, I need to respond in my masculinity, dealing with my sexual desires as he would have me to and not just have a desire to spill seed, but to raise up seed. And if I'm raising up seed, I'm not just depleting my life source, killing myself. I am producing one that is me 
that is a part of myself that will be a part of my longevity and my lineage. So it's not just fruitless and aimless and selfish because I'm producing a son, I'm producing a daughter that is me. Does that make sense, family? Because, I, man, I'm telling you, man, I had to deal with this thing. I had to get control of my appetites. I had to deal with the fact that, you know, I wanted that dopamine hit, you know, after the release. Oh, now I can go to bed. Versus I need to be able to calm myself. We view sex and, and uh, orgasms as, you know, something to help us self-soothe. I know that uh, we've been abused. We have so much trauma in the community. And even after you come over into the, the Israelite tradition and you know who you are, you have no longer discontinued from your heritage. Yeah, you know who you are, but you haven't done this level of work. You haven't gone back and asked yourself, is this mindset, this multiple, multiple, you know, this multi-orgasmic mindset beneficial for me as a man? If not, then I got to let some of this stuff go. I have to challenge myself to change. Because I'm finding that many of men that uh, once you get in your 40s and in your 50s and in your 60s, maybe because you believe that you have to be multi-orgasmic, you know, orgasmic on a daily basis, that now you you blown out your, uh, your, your prostate. You're having prostate issues. You went to the doctor, now you're 40, now your, 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 your PSA levels are, uh, are elevated, which is a prostate, uh, I believe, antigen, that says that maybe your prostate isn't operating at the levels that it need to. That maybe if you reduce the amount of sex that you're having unnecessarily, that that would not be a problem. And our men, deal with prostate problems a very uh, uh on you know the um we're just more susceptible to prostate cancers according to um a lot of the science you can't do anything about your heredity factors but what you can deal with is your diet and you can deal with the frequency as, as in which you engage that process to produce that spark, to produce life. That spark is life. Are you trying to produce life or are you just trying to get one off? And that's for you to decide. I'm not telling anyone what to do, what not to do, how frequently or infrequently you should engage in said activity. That's your business. I'm telling you that Maybe instead, I had to look at me and say, well, maybe instead of me trying to engage in all of these, this, this, this sex, this conquest, maybe I need to focus on, uh, on economics and commerce that I can build to help increase the value of my family, to help me buy more land, to buy, uh, to, to be more financially stable. What commerce could I could I have engaged in? What spiritual practice? What uh, uh, could I have learned? What? Uh, how could I have increased myself academically and intellectually during that same time that I'm trying to get, you know, sex? And then your wife is looking at you suspect because she sees that immaturity. She sees that you have difficulty dealing with rejection. You know, you give her attitude. So it makes it a little more difficult for her to try to be one with you and submit to you completely because you're acting like a child. And what, you know, my elder has taught me is that in order to be a man, that definition, that working definition is... Uh, an adult male that has differentiated himself and polarized himself from that which is a woman and a child. I've differentiated myself. 
I don't act like them. So when I was a child, I thought like a child. I behaved as a child. Maybe we still have childish thoughts about our sexuality, about our the way that we view, you know, sexual conquest still. And I'm talking about in the Israelite tradition, being a, a Hebrew Israelite. That don't mean that you've dealt with these things. You just discovered your identity. But how did these men look at said act? You got those that did it in error and those that did it righteously. You got, uh, we look at what happened with Judah. Judah ended up sleeping with his daughter-in-law, Tamar, and produced twins from that union. I know that my fathers are more prone to sexual sin. The Amalekites knew it. <laughs> you think that our enemy has not studied us, spent billions of dollars on a pornography industry to promote women that are out there gyrating, that are putting their, their breasts, their body, their hips, because you know, ain't nobody built like a black woman. I put a post out just the other day about how much I love my mama, love my mother, her complexion, her, 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 her femininity, her expression. Black women, they expressed a certain way. Their image is a certain thing and they tend to have more curves than other cultures. And I love that. But do you, can you appreciate and value that without it being sexual and wanting to dominate, wanting to, to conquer? I don't know if you can or can't. But this whole hypersexual narrative is a stereotypical trope that has been, uh, you know, placed upon and, and portrayed within black male masculinity for so long that we we can't control ourselves we just gotta have women just go out and just grabbing things not me not me not anymore i've done it and i see the error in it so i don't teach this to my sons i don't teach it to my daughters obviously but to have control of your members, of your desires. And that even of itself is, is more attractive to women. A man that's in control. That, eh, you know, I can have it or not have it. <laughs> what? You don't want me? Yeah, I want you, but I'm not finna, I'm not going to allow that to rule me. Rule your desires, oh man. You want to be a god, you got to rule that. Not immature. Just being a, a reflection of the Most High. That's what I mean. Being his son. So, I could go further, but I, I just challenge you to look at how you express yourself sexually. What do you want? even within a marriage that is more than just conquest it's more than just getting one and rolling over and now i can go to sleep you know my my father's uh my uncles they looked at it like if you constantly masturbating or masturbating at all one you were lame because you could not get a woman to handle that for you two you should have control of of your urges you shouldn't need it like that and they would go into these conversations like, hell no, I'm not finna, you know, be raping myself. You raping yourself. Self-rape. Handling your own business. But it has been marketed to us that that is okay by the dominant society. They tell you that it's okay. But what did our fathers say? What did the father say about it? Maybe it's not okay. Maybe it does pervert you. Maybe it does interrupt the, 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 the flow of energy, that divine energy, that anointing that he put on your life. Maybe it does interrupt that. And if it does interrupt it, who benefits from you not being able to be in contact, in touch, to hear from the divine? Your enemies. 
They benefit from that. They benefit from you having prostate cancer early, dying, having to go to the doctor, taking their medication, having a limp noodle, being depressed. Now you on Prozac. You on all type of uh, medicines. You're 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 or either you're self-medicating. You're drinking a lot, which exacerbates the problem. You're smoking weed, which exacerbates the problem. That that chemically can castrate you. This this marijuana that they're producing can effeminize a man. I'm not even finna go there. But all these things work together to cause you, Hebrew man, to be less like the image of your fathers, to be less like the image of the Most High. So if we're talking about rediscovering, controlling uh, our righteous mind, then let's do it in its completeness. Let's not leave this element out. Let's really, really become these people. A more mature masculinity. That's all I'm proposing. The most high bless you, strength you. I hope you have ears to hear. And don't take my word for it. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. All right, family. Shalom, shalom.